Today we're going to look at working with OSC in disguise. Welcome back to the Hive School, where we help you one up your live event production workflows. As you can see, we're in our new studio. We're just moving all the kit in, so it's still rather bare for now. Hopefully you saw our last video where we showed you how to set up disguise to be controlled by this MIDI controller. But you might not have a MIDI controller lying around when you realize that you need a fader. There's another control protocol that we often use in our disguise projects, and that's OSC or Open Sound Control. One of our most popular videos from last year was when we showed you how to set up OSC control using a Stream Deck and Companion. But again, you might not have a Stream Deck available when you realize you want to have external control. Today we're going to show you another way that you can use OSC in disguise, one that is hopefully more accessible to some of you who are just starting out. With Touch OSC, we can build our own interface to control this disguise server wirelessly from an iPad. The first thing I'm going to suggest you do is head over to download.disguise.one. You'll hopefully recognize this from when you download the, the designer installer. If you scro scroll down the page a bit, you'll see in the center a tab for resources. In the OSC MIDI and DMX section, you'll be able to download a pre-made layout for Touch OSC. Of course, you're also going to need Touch OSC itself in order to use that layout. So head over to hexful.net and download the editor. While you're doing some downloading, also grab your iPad and download the Touch OSC app from the App Store. In disguise, we need to head to the Devices menu to add an OSC device. If we hit the plus button, you'll see that OSC1 is one of the pre-made devices that are available to you. Left-click to add it to your project. Now if we right-click to configure, you'll see that the top bar is red and it's complaining that it is unable to send data as you haven't specified the destination IP address yet. But don't worry about that for now, we'll come back and fix that very shortly. We need to note our send and receive port. There's nothing wrong with 7400 and 7401, but it's worth remembering that only one piece of software can use a port at once. So if for whatever reason there's anything else on your machine using those ports, you just need to pick some new ones. We also need to know the IP address of your disguise machine. Luckily, the guys at Disguise know how important this is for sending and receiving OSC messages. So they've included a network info section at the bottom of the OSC device. Click the rock triangle on the right hand side and we can see the IP address of our machine. With the OSC device added to our list and armed with our send and receive ports plus our IP address, Disguise is ready to receive OSC messages. If you haven't done so already, now's a great time to install the Touch OSC editor. Once installed, I'm going to open up the layout that we got from the Disguise website. If this is your first time using Touch OSC, then you'll see a message asking you to license your editor. I'm pretty sure they allow you to use it for free, but I'm a big believer in supporting software that you find useful. So I'd encourage you to think about buying a license if you think you're going to use this regularly. Inside that layer, Disguise have given you everything you need for basic transport control. In order to transfer this interface to your iPad, click the last icon on the right of the toolbar that looks like a Wi-Fi icon. And go to the server tab, and then tick it on. What's happening here is you're making this interface available to other instances of Touch OSC on your network. I'm going to swap now to my iPad. When you open Touch OSC, the interface looks a lot like the one that you had on your PC. Click the same network icon on the right hand side of the toolbar. So long as both your computer and your iPad are on the same Wi-Fi network, you should see the name of your computer in the list of available servers. When you click Connect, it will sync the interface to your iPad. If we go to the next icon to the left of the network button, it should look like two links in a chain. There you'll be able to tell Touch OSC where you want to send your OSC messages. By default, this opens up to the MIDI tab, but we want to send OSC messages. So tap the OSC button to open that section, and let's fill in the details with connection mark. The host is your disguise machine. We took note of the IP address earlier, so let's fill that in here. The send port needs to be the port that disguise is set to receive from. So with the default disguise OSC settings, that's going to be 7401. The receive port will be the port that Disguise is set up to send on, so that's 7400. This is the opposite labelling of the way that things are set up in Disguise, because we're sending to Disguise's receive port, and we're receiving from Disguise's send port. We're now going to prove that Disguise is receiving messages from your iPad. When you added the OSC device, you might have noticed that the top bar expanded to include an OSC indicator, and that any time I press a button on the iPad, you'll see that it lights up green to indicate that a message has been received. I can right click it and then left click where it says monitor. That will bring up a readout of the OSC messages that the disguise machine is receiving. 
Now there's only a couple more bits that we need to do to get everything working. In order for our data to get sent from our disguise machine back to our iPad, we need to tell disguise the IP address of that device. To find it, go to the connections menu in Touch OSC and then hit the I next to the receive port. In the network info that opens, you'll see next to where it says ENO that the IP address is 192.168.0.202. Back in disguise, I'm going to open up the OSC device and right at the top, I'm going to fill in our iPad's IP address. To complete the incoming connections, we need to tell disguise what to do with the in incoming messages. Let's go to our transport, add a local transport, give that transport a name, and then in the options that open up, choose Event Transport OSC. Now that's been added, you'll see that the OSC connection light is flashing in our interface and the info panels at the top of the iPad screen now have the name of our track and the time code too. Data is flowing from disguise to our iPad Touch OSC interface. Pushing play, stop and the next previous section buttons trigger the corresponding controls within disguise. Mission accomplished. Today we've been through the steps required to get OSC data into disguise and in our next video, we'll show you how to trigger specific cues from our timeline and control parameters within layers using expressions. So to make sure that you don't miss that one, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. From everyone here at the Hive School, we'll see you next time. Thank you.